Hello everyone, welcome to Downtown Tailoring. In today's video, we are going to let out the waist on a jeans completely by hand. And to add a little bit of sprinkle, we are going to use some sashiko stitching on it. So let's go! If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. I love this job. Please let me know in the comments if you would be willing to do this kind of job. These are the jeans, no opening, let's use scissors, and we are going to cut to a slit at the sides. We have to go a little lower because we need not just the waist, but a little bit of the hips too. So I'm going to mark more or less parallel to the side seam, the best I can because you know jeans are sometimes a little tricky, and I'm going just right to the end of the side top stitch. I'm gonna use the regular scissor for the waistband and then I'm gonna use pinky shear for the rest of it. Now I have my jeans open. If you want, you can overcast this, but I think you don't need to do that. Now I'm gonna use a little plastic just because it's transparent because I'm gonna mark what I need. So I'm gonna let out two inches, so this is one inch at each side, and then I'm gonna mark what will be the seam allowance. This is what I need, and I'm gonna square off those marks just to, you know, to make it look square. And then I'm gonna traspass this to a nice and clean paper, so it's all nice. So I have here what I need for the size of my patching and my seam allowance. And I'm gonna mark inside the boundaries for my sachiko stitching. I'm gonna do one for the waistband and then another for the rest. And now I can cut it off and choose the material that I'm gonna use on my patches. I'm using an old jeans, but I prefer to use it to the grain of the material. I don't know, I think it looks better. I'm using an old jeans material, but you can use any fabric you want, even brocade. When I have my pieces, I'm gonna traspass all the marks I did before to prepare myself for the sashiko stitches. If you don't want to embroider, it's okay too. I like to use sashiko for this kind of project because it goes according to the history of the sashiko art because right now is known as an art but before it was something more practical sashiko stitches were used to reinforce the clothes of the japanese fishermen as you know i've been doing sashiko for some time now but i don't like to say that i'm an expert or anything like that and I want to give credit where credit is due and I like to get my supplies made from Japan. Let's prepare the first patch in the easiest way, which is vertical lines. I'm gonna find the center of my patch and then I'm gonna trace parallel lines. Today I'm gonna use white thread, which will look great with the dark navy. The good thing about the sashiko thread, it's the unique way that is twist. Japanese don't like to make too much knots, so I'm gonna show you how they do it. I'm gonna use this thimble that goes a little lower in the hand because that makes it easier to push the needle. So I'm gonna start with the back stitch, sewing backwards and then I'm gonna insert my needle a little bit just besides the last hole and then I'm gonna go back right in the same hole I did the stitches first. When we do sashiko we have to take in account that it's very different to our occidental way of embroidery. Instead of measure exactly where each point is going to be with sashiko, you kind of insert the needle by moving the fabric towards the needle. And then you kind of create a rhythm and the expert do like a lot of stitches at once. 
instead of pulling the needle, you kind of push the fabric through the needle. So while doing sashiko, you pretty much will be kind of fixing the fabric. So that way you can really do fast job. Like a, it can be really fast. Remember that there was like a lot of stitches that needed to be done back in Japan. So I have my first piece. I decided to do the waistband horizontal so it could distinguish. And let me show you how can you do a little bit more interesting. So you basically go with the geometrical patterns. Like um, you can try to make your own pattern, but always there will be already this. You can use as well if you have Procreate. I kind of created like a diamond shape and then I repeat it many times until I got a pattern. Then you can just print that in your computer. I will give you some of them so you can do it at home if you like. And then you can cut it to the size you need and you can transfer all these geometrical pattern. If they are too big, you can make it smaller and print it again, you know what I mean. You can use tracing paper or you can use this sulky sticky paper. It's, it's like a water soluble, but you can print on it and then you can just glue it into your fabric and then you can embroider on top of it. This is great, but sometimes I don't love it because it makes the fabric a little bit more thicker. It makes the job a little bit more difficult. When you finish then, you just have to put it through the water and then all that will go and then you can just use it. I'm just, I don't need to see if I can dry it faster but I won't be able to do it, of course not. But this is a very good solution too. Here you go, these are my three, but I'm gonna use the two that are dry and I'm gonna prepare it by basting the edges. I'm using like a blue thread, so if you want after you can remove it, but if you forget, it will be okay. So now they are really ready and let's go to the pants. I'm going to prepare my pants and I think that a very, very easy way is to use cotton interfacing that I can stick. I prepare like more or less like at the hole, but I left mm, around one centimeter or three eight of the inch of seam allowance. I didn't want it to make it too big because I'm going to sew everything by hand and if I put thick and thick of material and through that all then will be the job more difficult now from the top my patch i'm using for that hand fusing tape and you have to be sure when you are doing that that the waist will be separated by one inch which is what you want to give of seam allowance when you have everything prepared well then that will be so easy. You can sew all the way at the edges. I'm gonna use backstitch, which will make it a little bit stronger. And because I don't trust myself, I'm gonna just mark it with a ruler and I'm gonna mark one quarter inch, which will be more or less the size of my backstitch. I'm leaving kind of like a millimeter in between them so it looks better and I'm gonna use for the waistband like a golden color when I finish my first one then I'm gonna do exactly the same with the second one just make sure that you are leaving the one inch you needed and then I'm gonna finish with my brown thread the waistband and here you go it's done look how it looks inside look how it looks outside is very clean and very nice i love it now this is the pants with my girl and she looks fantastic i am so proud i really like this job if you find this video useful please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe share comment bye